Let me mm -hmm. So we need to discuss uh, the difference between JDK, JRE, JVM. And let's discuss first uh, what is JVM. So JVM is the core of the any right uh, operating system. Once you install Java, so JVM is the main component uh, in the system. So basically, uh, JVM will allows the software program. You can write once, run anywhere. Run anywhere means you can run in any operating systems like Mac, Linux, and the Windows operating systems. And JVM basically performs uh, you know, different tasks. Like you know, you first compilation after first it loads the code inside the JVM by the JVM component. So that is a class loader. And second uh, responsibility of JVM is it verifies the bytecode. There is a bytecode verifier inside the JVM that verifies the generated bytecode is proper or not. Third responsibility, JVM executes the code. The bytecode stream will be executed line by line. And uh, so it will be So given you no know, to the JVM component to execute, that is uh, interpreter. So another component interpreter will execute the code. And also it provides a runtime environment. In your program, you need a, some environment, right? That environment is created by Java itself. The JVM will provide that. So then JVM also uh, initially designed to support only Java. However, after some time, so it supports other languages like uh, Scala, Kotlin, uh, Groovy. So were adapted on the Java platform. So these, these kind of technologies also supported in the JVM platform. And uh, so it's just a physical uh, machine, uh, Java virtual machine is a physical machine in the computer. So we call it as, you know, just a, a guest machine and uh, on the physical computer. So when you write, when you, when you have a operating system, then a virtual machine will be there. So that's the, you know, virtual machine and then these virtual machines uh, you know java virtual machine has a lot of uh, layers are there inside the java virtual machine so if you see this is the class loader first component of jvm this is the architecture of jvm class loader so class loader inside you have many uh, class loaders Three types of class loaders are there. Uh, bootstrap class loader, extension class loader, and the application class loader. These are the three types of class loaders are there. So what is a class loader responsibility? So as yesterday we have seen, right? Uh, here, once the dot class file is generated, this dot class file will be loaded into JVM by this class loader. Who will do that uh, loading into the JVM? That dot class file, the class loader will do that. So this is the one of the component, primary component of a JVM. A primary component of a JVM. And then we have a 
So memory areas. These are the memory areas. So we have a method area, heap, stack, PC register, native method stack. These are the five memory areas will be there. Once the byte stream is loaded, the data will go and store in the respective memory areas. This is the memory areas. What are the different memory areas in the JVM? Method area, heap area, stack area, PC register. PC means program counter register, native method stack. So these are the memory areas in JVM. So the main memory is important, right? That memory, so how it will store the data, I will come back again. Which data uh, will go to which memory, I'll explain later once we progress a little bit. But first you need to understand the data types and variables. At that time I'll come back to these memories, okay? Which data will go and in which memory, I'll uh, explain once you get familiarity with the different types of variables and methods. Then there is an execution engine. So once the data is loaded here, then execution engine has some components like interpreter, uh, JIT compiler, garbage collector. These are the three components. These three components, right? These three components, so are available here, okay? These three components are available in the execution engine. Interpreter will execute the bytecode stream and JIT compiler, so we'll improve the speed of execution and garbage collector, another one, if any unused objects are there in the, in the entire system, it will clean up in these memory areas. That's the garbage collector responsibility. The native method interface, basically other APIs or any other code you want to interact with the Java platform and this JNI will help you. So native method library means all the Java code, Java code that they have written, that code is available here. So that code is available here. So that will come from this library and if necessary, it will come and you no know, taken from this library. So this is all about uh, JVM architecture. So once again, I'm repeating. The first component of uh, JVM is a class loader. So when you compile a dot, you know, dot Java source file, it is converted into bytecode as a dot class file. So when you try to use this class in your program, the class loader loads into you the main memory. So that's the class loader responsibility. So who will load the class file, dot class file? A dot class file will be loaded by a class loader component. That's a first component in JVM. So it's one of the subsystem in the JVM. So that will load the class file into JVM. The first class to be loaded into memory is usually the class that contains the main method. So there will be a main method in the your program. So that will first load it into memory. Uh, so that is a main method. So this is main method is already written by Java. So you don't need to write it. This method is used to execute your code. So if you want to execute your code, you will use that. So this is the different type of class loader I told, right? Bootstrap class loader extension class loader, application class loader. So then it will link. So all this, you know, file. So verify, prepare, resolve, and initialization will happen. So bootstrap class loader is the root class loader. Okay, root class loader. It is the super class of extension class loader. So it is the super class of extension class loader. And loads the 
standard Java packages, loads the standard Java packages. And uh, so it has like, you know, java.lang, java.net, java.util, java.io. These are all the built-in packages in standard edition. These packages are present in the rt.jar file. So that's the main bootstrap class loader, what it will load. Then there is an extinction class loader. This is the subclass of bootstrap class loader and super class of application class loader. So this loads the extinction of standard Java libraries like under Java home, ZRE, lib, extinction. Under this directory, what are the jar files will be there? All those will be loaded into JVM by this extinction class loader. So application class loader. This is the final class loader and the subclass of extinction class loader. It loads the files present on the class path. So by default, the class path is set to the current directory of the application. The class path can also be modified by adding the iPhone class path or minus CP command. So you can use in the command line. So minus CP you can use to load the class path. But if, when you are getting a class not found exception, that means that your class is not there in the class path. That's why you'll get a class not found exception. So these are the three different types of class loaders are there in JVM. So JVM uses the class loader dot load class method uh, for loading the class into memory. So that's how it will load into memory uh, main thing. So see that this is the very important last point you can see here, just now I explained, right? If a parent class loader is unable to find a class, it delegates the work to a child class loader. If the last child class loader isn't able to load the class either, it throws no class dev found error or class not found exception you will get. So if the class is not loaded and you will get this class not found exception, no class dev found error exception, then your program won't run. With these exceptions, your program won't run. So then you have to, either you can copy that to, to the class path. So you can move to a different location and you can specify your class path where that class file is there. So this is the linking. Uh, after a class is loaded into memory, it undergoes the linking process. Linking a class or interface involves combining the different elements and dependencies of the program together. So this I'll, I'll explain this later because uh, now if I explain also you won't understand once you uh, little bit progress happened, then you can understand all this process. But understand the components of uh, the different uh, layers in the JVM. First one is the class loader. Then how many types of class loaders are there? Then what are the memory areas? These are the memory areas again. Method area, heap area, stack area, PC register, and native method stack. These are the different uh, memory areas. So, and this one also I'll, I'll explain uh, when this what data will store here in the method area. But understand a little bit if you can. Otherwise, I'll come back again to this. All the class level data, such as runtime, constant pool, field, and method data, and the code for methods and constructors are stored here. So this is the one. But I, I just want to you know, explain that uh, later. Once you, you need to understand this, right? What is constant pool, field, all those things? One minute.
Okay, so these are you need to understand this. This will be I, I will explain later. This what is the field means, what is the method means. So again, I'll come back to these areas. Don't worry. As of now, just understand what are the memory areas. So if the memory is available, memory available in the method area is not sufficient for the program startup, the gen JVM throws out of memory error. So this is the simple program, public class, employee, and private string. These are called fields. These are called fields. And this is the constructor we call this. Okay. So this, this data will go and store in the, the constructor data or uh, static data and constant pool data will go and store in the in this method area. So that is the uh, main concept. Then heap area. So the heap area, this one, this memory, right? This is the second memory. The second memory heap area, we call that all the objects. So objects means runtime data. The runtime data will go and store in the heap area. Like this, when you create object with a new keyword, you will create object for the constructor. This is the called constructor and this is the class name. So when you create object, all the runtime data, so we'll go and store in the heap area. So that's the heap area. Only runtime data will go and store in the heap area. Then stack area. So stack area is whenever a new thread is created in the JVM, a separate runtime stack is created. So at the same time, runtime stack is created. All local variables data, method calls, partial results are stored in the stack area. So local variables means uh, in the method body inside, you will declare local variables. A temporary results, method calls will go to this stack area memory. Just mainly this part you remember. What will store in the stack area? You should know that. So, and also this, if the processing being done in thread requires a larger stack size than what is available, the JVM throws a stack overflow error. If the stack is not sufficient, you will get a stack overflow error. And also another important point, stack data, so won't be available for the next method inside, you cannot use. Same method data, you can use in the same method only, but not in another method. Because, so once that stack is over, that will be destroyed from the stack memory. So at the same time, that method is executed, then it will be cleared off, destroyed, that entire stack frame. So that's why the local data won't be available for use in the next method. So, because that frame will be destroyed. So, the stack frame is divided into three subparts local variables, upper end stack, and frame data. So, these are the different uh, okay. local variables, means each frame contains an array of variables, like those are called local variables. All local variables and their values are stored here in this local variables frame and so local all local variables then values will store there so the length of this array is determined at compile time only so how much length is there this local variables that will be uh, determined at the time of compile time so upper end stack so each time contains a last in first out stack that is called upper end stack so this act as a runtime workspace to perform any intermediate operation like uh, mathematical operations or any kind of operations that will be done in this uh, operand stack. A frame data, all symbols corresponding to the method are stored here. That's the frame data. So this will store the catch block information in case of exceptions. 
So that's the all about uh, this is the you know, method, you can call method, and this is the local data. So this is the local data. This local data will go and store in the frame, that uh, stack area. So this is another method. So that will store, so inside a stack frame. So this is all, uh, no stack. Stack inside it will store. Next, program counter registers. So JVM supports multiple threads at the same time. Like, you know, threads are parallel. Yesterday I told, right? Concurrently they will run. So that threads, so uh, no, it supports by JVM. Each thread has its own PC register to hold the address of the currently executing JVM instruction. So which thread is currently executing? That current execution instruction has a one address. That address will store in this program counter register. Which line is executing, right? That line has one address, generates automatically. That address will store in this program counter register, so memory. Once the instruction is executed, the PC register is updated with the next instruction. Automatically, every instruction will be updated here. So with the one address, like the last one, native method stacks. So native method stacks are, so JVM contains stacks that support native methods. These methods are written in so other languages also, like Java, C, C++. For every new thread, a separate native method stack is also created. So that's the native method stack memory. So what are the different memories? Method area. Stack area. Heap area. Stack area, PC register, native method stack. These are the memory areas. And the third component, a very important component, execution injured component. So once the bytecode has been loaded into main memory, the details are available in the runtime data area. So the next step is to run the program, right? Once it is available in the memory, it takes from the memory and the execution injured components will execute the bytecode. So before executing the program, the bytecode needs to be converted to machine language instructions. The JVM can use an interpreter or a JIT compiler for the execution engine. So that's what the interpreter and JIT compiler will do that. So interpreter reads and executes the bytecode instructions line by line. Due to the line by line execution, the interpreter is comparatively slower because it takes some time, right? One by one line you have to execute. Another disadvantage of interpreter is that when a method is called multiple times, every time a new interpretation is required. So that's the interpreter problem. No, but interpreter will execute the, your code. Next, JIT compiler. Uh, JIT means just-in-time compiler. So it compiler overcomes the disadvantage of the interpreter. So whatever the slowly executing, right? That will be overcome by this JIT compiler. The execution engine first uses the interpreter to execute the bytecode, but when it finds the some repeated code, it uses the JIT compiler. So the JIT compiler then compiles the entire bytecode and changes it to the native machine code. This native machine code is used directly for repeated method calls, which improves the performance of the system. That's how the performance will be improved by the JIT compiler. The execution speed will increase by this JIT compiler tool. So JIT compiler has the following component like intermediate code generator, code optimizer, target code generator, profiler. So these are the different components of that. So we don't need very deep, but know what are the different components available in the JVM. So that's important. They will ask this question. So can you explain the JVM architecture? So you need to uh, explain that. So this is another very important garbage collector. 
So garbage collector collects and removes unreferenced objects from the heap area. So heap area inside whatever unused objects are there. That means you created object, but you are not using that. Unnecessarily memory occupies, right? Then garbage collector, what it will do? So it will reclaim that memory automatically and destroy them. So that it will free up your memory. That's the garbage collector responsibility. So garbage collection makes Java uh, memory efficient because uh, it removes the unreferenced objects from heap memory and makes free space for new objects. So it involves two phases. One is a mark phase and sweep phase. So in the mark phase step, a GC identifies the unused objects in the memory and sweep phase the GC removes the object identified during the mark phase. That's the two phases, how it will. And garbage collection is done automatically by the JVM at regular intervals. Doesn't need to handle separately. You don't need to handle. But in C++, you have to handle manually. So, but here in the Java, you don't have that problem. So also you can use, if you want to handle manually, want to trigger, you can call system.gc method, uh, but the execution is not guaranteed, right? That's the, but automatically JVM will take care. The G, you know, it will run. So JVM contains three different types of garbage collectors, serial GC, parallel GC, and garbage first GC. So these are the three. So you don't need that much in depth, but just understand what GC will do, what GNA will do, what interpreter will do. That's more than enough, okay? So Java native interface, the last component. So for example, you have a, uh, other than Java code, you want to execute a different uh, code like C++ and Kotlin, other code you want to execute in the JVM. So that support is given by this JNI. Other than Java, other code if you want to execute that. So bridge will be uh, prepared by this JNI component. So that's the JNI main purpose. Native method libraries. So native method libraries are libraries that are written in other programming languages like C, C++, and uh, other programming languages if you write. So these libraries are present in the form of .dll and so on. So these native libraries can be loaded through ZNI. So that's the uh, all about JVM. So common JVM errors are class not found exception. Uh, this occurs when the class loader is trying to load classes uh, using class dot for name, class loader dot class load class method, class loader dot finds find system class, but no definition for the class, then you will get this uh, class not found exception. No class def found error also same. So this class is not available in the class path. Then you will get this no class def found error. Out of memory error. This occurs when the JVM cannot allocate an object, then you will get a out of memory error or no memory error. Stack overflow error, your stack memory is full and uh, no space, then you will get a stack overflow error. So these are the, uh, so all about JVM. So what is JRE? So JRE is an acronym of uh, Java Runtime Environment. So it is mainly used to run your program. If you want to run your program, you should have a JRE in your system. So JRE contains a JVM plus set of library files and other files will be, that's all JRE. So if JRE is there, then you can run your program. Otherwise you cannot run your program. Then second one is JDK. So JDK is the acronym of Java Development Kit. So this is the mainly used for software development environment, okay? So which is used to develop Java applications and applets. So this JDK is the combination of JRE plus development tools. So JDK contains, uh, so 
Java private virtual machine and also interpreter, uh, compiler, archiver, document generator. So these are all available in the JDK. So now see, can you see that? JDK inside you have JRE already. So the combination of JRE plus development tools is the JDK. So that's why in the latest uh, JDK, you won't see separately JRE and JDK. So till Java 8, you can see JRE and JDK separately. Now they combine because JDK inside JRE is there. Now in the latest versions, you will see only JDK folder when you install. So like this. So if you go to program files, program files, Java, so you will see only JDK. So there is no JRE folder. Before in Java 8, you will see JDK separate, JRE separate. But now you, you will see only one folder because so JRE is part of JDK. JRE is part of JDK. That's why they are not showing separately. So that's all about JDK. JDK is mainly used for Java development purpose. JRE is just to run your program, you can use JRE. So JVM is the main component when you install, all the execution will happen inside the JVM only. The memory areas and everything will be available in the JVM only. These are the three important components, JVM, JRE and JDK. Okay, any questions? Join back and we'll uh, execute, we'll you know, install the softwares like Java, some important uh, uh, softwares will install. Okay, yeah.